This is the Harpoon um, RGB and um, it's an optical mouse and it looks somewhat like one of those um, ambidextrous mice. So it's not like a right-handed ergonomic kind of mouse. They have six fully programmable buttons and on-the-fly DPI switching, which is exactly what I use right now. Um, it, I mean, all of you know, right, I think if you watch my streams, that for Overwatch, I bind my um, side buttons on my mouse because I'm a very right-handed gamer. Like, yeah, I mean, I use my left hand to press certain commands, but I'm very right-handed. So I like having all my controls on the mouse and having six fully programmable buttons on it is going to make um, a big difference to how I play, but that's just because of the way I play. I'm not saying it's going to work for you, but, you know, it's just feedback or just, you know, different points of view that you might be interested in. And I use on-the-fly DPI switching um, because sometimes I play Mercy and sometimes when I play uh, Reinhardt, like, I feel like you need very different DPS settings for both. And on the fly, DPI switching kind of helps me change the sensitivity as I go. So of course, there's multicolor backlight, the logo glows, and the sides are textured rubber grips, which is nice. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to open it. I'm going to show you the back first. It's a 6000 DPI um, mouse, which I think is perfectly perfectly um, enough. I mean, you know, there's this DPI wars and everything, but the higher the DPI does not necessarily mean uh, the higher the accuracy or whatever. So I feel that 2000 is the sweet spot for me. And I really like just playing it. 2000 or 1006. Anyway, let's open it. Scissors. Sorry, I need to concentrate very hard when I use scissors. Don't want to injure myself. There we go. The normal bubble packaging, I guess. This is what it's called, bubble packaging. Ooh, some papers at the bottom. Okay, let's look at the manuals first, of course. Okay, not my language, not my language, not my language. Ah, Corsair Limited Warranty. So, they only guarantee that genuine hardware products purchased from an authorized reseller will be free from defects in material and workmanship for a specific length of time. Okay, that's normal. Um, Warranty period will vary by product. Da, 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 da. So how much warranty do I have? Or how long do I have on this? Mm. <laughs> okay, I think if it varies from product, it might be here, which is the little gaming guide. Thingy. Oh, no, not, not gaming guide. What am I talking about? Like the little item guide thingy. It's teaching me how to set up the mouse in here. Okay, anyway, so I can't find a warranty right now, but um so I'm opening it. Okay, let me put in more light. I'm going to grab my little light so that you guys can see it clearly. There, nice and bright. Mouse. So, hmm, first impressions. The surface is actually pretty rough and I'm not talking about the sides of it. The sides are textured, see? It's bumpy and it's so cool that the bumps are random. 
I mean, you know, it's just interesting. They are not really bumps, they are triangles, I think. Because it's supposed to have the same look and feel as the Corsair logo, right? Corsair logo is here. So they are all little triangles, mini triangles. Let's see if my webcam will focus. It's a bit dim. So yeah. I know you can't really see, but they are little triangles. All these. And these are the side buttons. So the side buttons are only on the right hand side. Uh, left hand side, sorry. Oh, my left and right. So it's on the left hand side. And this side has no buttons. So I guess you could say it's a right hand mouse that kind of feels like an MB mouse. And as I was saying, the surface is kind of rough. It feels like um, brushed plastic. So you know there are some mice which have um, rubberized surfaces and I really don't like those because after quite a while of play it starts peeling, gets sticky and um, the feeling is just ugh. So I've always liked mice which have either a smooth plastic surface or well I guess this rough surface feels quite nice. So let's see how that goes um, through my hours of play. Mouse wheel is not too stiff and not too loose. Feels just about right. And DPI button is right there. And I'm very happy to report that it's not a braided cable. So I have a big argument with braided cables, especially on mice. Uh, they tend to kink and be very stiff after a bit. I've always preferred rubberized cables and I got quite sad when a lot of the manufacturers decided to um, change to braided cables. Another interesting about this mouse is the cables attach to the left hand side button area instead of the middle. And um, I'm very interested to see how this feels like when I play. Because the mouse itself is really light, so if the point of um, contact is on the left button, um, I don't know. I don't know how um, the physics is going to work, but it's interesting, definitely interesting. And the mouse feet are four flat feet here and at the bottom. It's a very light mouse, which I like. Um, even though I'm used to slightly heavier mice, but I think you should be able to control it pretty well. Seems good. So anyway, I'm going to put the mouse aside. Oh wait, I think before I put the mouse aside, I should see if I have a spare USB port so that I can um, light it up and see how that works. Oh, look, actually the USB, USB port is pretty cool. Now let me see. What what has been going on in the chat right now? Just let me pause a bit and look. Formatting Harpoon. Yeah, this is the Harpoon RGB gaming mouse. Mm, very right-handed. Equals press mouse so hard her hand pain. Yeah, actually that happens, you know. Like um, my my hands sometimes ache this part, and here. Yeah. Well, it's not really matte finish. It's not just matte finished, it's, um, it's texturized. And um, like when I scrub my finger over it, you can actually see some of my skin collecting on the surface. Uh, so let me show you. <laughs> see? It cleans up very well. No problems with that. It's just that I was just doing that to show you how um, textured the surface is. So it's not just matte finished. Hi, Pippi Leong. <laughs> I tried that mouse. Was DPI random spaz teapot? Left side cable throws your aim off big time. Well, I do have a mouse bungee, so I think that would help. Um, so I would probably attach the bungee somewhere here and then just have you know, free free moving cable on this side. Okay, wait, I was trying to plug it in and show you the colors. I think that it's very subjective. Um, 
equipment that people like. It's really very subjective. A lot of the equipment other people like, I don't normally like. So, yeah. And I was saying for the DPI, I don't use more than 2,000. So I feel that 6,000 is really way over what I would need. To each his own, you know. Um, like, I hate gassy drinks, but I know some people might like gassy drinks. <laughs> so that's the mouse. Okay, I'm going on to the next biggest item. Uh, I mean, the next smallest item. Sorry. Which is... Um, I think it should be the mouse pad. So mouse pad is in a really really big packaging. It's a hard pad. I only use um, hard pads because I just don't like the way my mouse feet feel on a cloth pad. It's very, it feels like there's a lot of resistance when I move it. So normally when I use hard pads as well, I use the side that is more slippery rather than the side that gives you more control and traction because my sense and um, DPI is generally very low so I prefer my mouse to be able to move freely on it um, because it's just tiring to have to scrub your mouse on a mouse pad and I change my mouse speed pretty often as well like every other month or so because I really like how it glides um, across surfaces rather than you know uh, like washing dishes. Okay, anyway, yeah. On to opening it. Okay, wait, no. Let's not open it yet. Let's read it. So it has an aluminium core. Rigid, lightweight, and durable for consistent glide and long life. Two unique surfaces. So this mouse pad has two surfaces. And they actually have a little feel triangle here for you to um, test how both sides feel. So if you're at a shop, you can just kind of like touch it. It says, touch me, touch me. Yeah. So you can see which side you like or whether either side is suitable for you. I guess that, you know, people will only really use one side long term. So yeah, but at least it gives you the option of um, changing if you wanted to. Okay, what else? Expert grade tracking. Precision engineering ensures accurate tracking. Pointage expert. Okay, wait, that's um, another language. Zero slip rubberized corners. Okay, so I guess the corners have um, little rubber pads. And this is the MM600 double sided gaming mouse mat. Here. Okay, what does the back say? Support that matches your style. Expertly tuned, high quality polymer surfaces. Uh, so heavy side texture grants outstanding control and the smooth texture side offers an exceptional high speed mouse platform. So I guess I'll be using the smooth side more. I don't know. I'll have to put my mouse on it and try. Okay, mm -hmm. everything else is on a different language. Okay, time to open it. Scissors. Sorry. I'm very pleased with myself that I remembered to take my scissors beforehand because, you know, sometimes when I do these unboxing videos, I forget to bring scissors and then I'm like running all over the place trying to look for my item when I'm already on stream or I'll just be trying to brute force it open myself. Ouch! The cardboard shut. Ouch! Ouch! Ouch. Paper cut. Warranty against defects. Our goods come with guarantees that cannot be excluded under Australian consumer law. Okay. Okay, never mind. Not relevant to me. Depending on product family, warranty duration ranges from two years to lifetime. Lifetime warranties are good. So I've had um my RAM died on me before, like another brand, and um, it had lifetime warranty. 
So it was really good that I could uh, swap it out. So when you like a product and you finally found a product that you really enjoy using, lifetime warranties are good. But I guess this has to be... Um, I think it's warranty against defects. So it's not against like wear and tear and stuff. It's against like factory defects, I'm guessing, which is how things normally are. But anyway, let's open a... Oh, you see, I got a paper cut. Let me see if you can see my poor paper cut on my thumb. It's not focused. Focus on my paper cut. See, anyway, it's like red and starting to bleed a little. <laughs> anyway. I'm just like... Okay, this packaging is confusing me a bit. The, the whole thing is in plastic and... Oh, okay, so it opens like an envelope. Okay, so there are three stickers on each end, which I need to release. And I'm only going to bother to open one side because I can slip it out this way. So it's a really, really big mouse pad. It's big. And it has like um, this... I don't know what this is. A fractal kind of looking design across the smooth side. And this is the rougher side. So the rougher side doesn't have any uh, design on it. And then these are the rubber grips. Yeah. And it's a very hard aluminum base. So I guess, you know, it's not so easy to break. And it looks like the sides are adhered to both sides of this aluminum plate. So, let's use my new mount and feel how it's like. Okay, it's really quite smooth. Let's try the other side. So I think it'll take a while for me to decide which side I like. But I think already I'm preferring the... Um, I think I'm preferring the rough side more. The sound is pretty... scratchy though. I wonder if this will wear out mouse feet more. So I think in general, hard mouse pads wear out your mouse feet more than cloth mouse pads do. Um, and maybe that's why I like to change my mouse feet a lot. But it's a small price to pay for using what I enjoy using. And um, I think I'll just have to play test this because... Like I said, I think you need like 5 to 10 hours before you actually decide whether you like your product and whether you can, um, or how you can use it and what is best for you. So it needs like 5 to 10 hours of play. Oh look, the logo changed color. So I don't know if you can see why it's red now. Just now when I showed it to you, it was like yellow. I think it's according to the DPI. Oh yeah, see? It changes according to preset DPIs. Okay, let me turn it this way. Okay, so this is the DPI button. It's green. I think this is yet a greenish yellow, blue, red. Yeah, it changes. The DPI changes when I press the button because I'm watching it on my screen, which you probably can't see. If you're doing a review, you're on VR right now, everyone, in a giant movie theater. <laughs> they give me a pause, I was like, what? What happened? Giant movie theater? No. Scary. So, okay, that's the mouse pad. Um, the rubber feet 
feel very solid. Oh, sorry. I was shaking the mouse pad to see if it would move, and my whole table moved instead. And it kind of raises the mouse pad a little bit off the table a bit because um, it's sitting on the feet and not the flat surface itself. But the edge of the mouse pad isn't so rough that it would hurt your wrist. So I've had mouse pads which are kind of raised off um, the table surface and when I swipe across and use my mouse, it really gives me abrasions and I can see marks here at the end of my um, gaming session, which is not good. <laughs> Definitely not good. Okay, so I think that's it for the unboxing of the mouse pad. Our headset. It's headset time. Um, oh yeah, I think this mouse, actually the harpoon, it's one of the lower ranges of um, Corsair's mice. Uh, they have, of course, more expensive mice, but I have no idea how those are like. So I went for basic because this is just what I need. I don't need you know, something that's so crazy, um, souped up. This serves my needs, and that's why I chose it. Yeah, you, you do not want to have um, cut marks on your wrist because people will start wondering what you're doing <laughs> with yourself. Okay, headset. This is the Void RGB wireless and it has 7.1 uh, Dolby. It has microfiber memory foam ear pads so you can play in comfort for hours. It's an info mic which is and it has an audio status indicator. That's cool. Everything you need to know about your audio status instantly. So, yeah. I'm reading off the back, by the way. I'll show you later. Uh, genuine Dolby Headphone 7.1 Surround. Most advanced positional audio technology enables 360 degrees of awareness and immersion. RGB lighting on the ear cups. So it can sync with other Corsair RGB devices. Or it can, you know, have it not sync. 2.4 GHz wireless, so performance gaming audio with no strings attached. Hmm. Tech specs, USB type A, and wireless range is 12 meters, battery life is 16 hours. Really? 16 hours? That is probably about as long as one of my gaming sessions. Hmm, so it should do okay. Uh, da -da 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 -da. So all these are extremely, all the, all the tacky specs, which um, I probably won't really get. So let's go to the mic. The mic is unidirectional, noise cancelling with adjustable rotating boom and info mic lighting. So unidirectional is important because you don't want to pick up sounds from all over your house. Like, you know, people who watch my stream, you know that, like the one last night, my husband likes to play with the Google Home when I'm streaming and cause a lot of problems to everyone who is on my um, voice chat because I use open mic. And uh, rotating boom and info mic lighting. So I guess that means you can rotate the mic up and keep it when you're not using it so it's like not over your face. So this side here just talks about everything that I mentioned, just summarizes it. Uh, let me look at the front. So you guys got to look at the front of this first. Now you can look at the back. Mm, this also just summarizes what I just talked about. <laughs> it kind of open. Let's hope I don't get another paper cut. I'm so clumsy. Okay. This is easy to open. It's just two stickers on the top. It's a, uh, it's a box in a box. A box in a box in a box. I should call this headphone Jack. <gasps> so many puns in that. Jack in a box, you know? And like, uh, you know, headphone Jack. So, the headphone is now called Jack. Hi, Jack. Um, Jack is secured to the bottom with some cable ties. 
Oh, you're using this headset too, Xiang? Yes, it's the wireless one. There, did I get it? Yeah, I got it. It's like performing operations sometimes, you know, these unboxing videos. So, here. I chose the white one. There's um, a Corsair logo, oops, upside down, Corsair logo here. And this side's empty. So I'm just gonna untie the mic and release it. And you know, I know some people who keep all these horrible sticky things on because they don't want to scratch their um, equipment. I'm not one of those. Like, immediately, I'm gonna peel them off. Okay, and there's a plastic bit here. I'm gonna cut this side as well. Hmm, new, new equipment smell. Hmm, nice. I mean, you know, I always like new device smells, don't you? And there is um, a USB device together with it. I guess this is to receive the signal from the headset. So, oh yeah, another plastic bit. Go off. Get off. The ear cups are not rounded. They are kind of like a trapeze trapezium, I think. Trapezoid. And um, one side of the ear cups has a on and off button as well as a mic mute button. Oh look, you can see the reflection in, you can see the reflection of my screen in my ear cup. That's so beautiful. <laughs> it's so shiny. So anyway, yeah. So uh, on and off button and mic mute button. Uh, do you look at the reflection a bit more? This side has a beautiful reflection too. There's um, some marking here at the bottom. Not sure what this is. I'll figure out when I use it, I guess. And this is the retractable mic. So the mic is soft, um, but you cannot bend it into shape, I think. Yeah, it, it, there's a limit to how much you can um, change the, the shape of this cable or this, this bit of the mic. I know there are some mics where, you know, it's like this bendy metal thing where you can just pull, pull it out and then change the, the um, amount of bend that you want on it. But this one's not like that. This one is a hard rubber casing and this is the mic bit here. So I'm guessing that this is mm, not really meant to be adjusted. Hopefully because the mic is really good, so it, it picks up at the correct place. Let's try how it feels. It's troublesome to put on headsets when you have long hair. Because um, the... The ear cup normally doesn't sit very well on hair, so you have to like figure out how to make it stick onto your head properly. Um, it's actually surprisingly light and the mic sits at just the right place. So the right place to actually have your mic when you are using a headset is somewhere below your mouth, somewhere at the chin, somewhere here and not like, you know, in your mouth or worse, in your nose so that you can, you know, have heavy breathing like, you know, broadcast to everyone who's listening to you so it's supposed to be somewhere here at your chin and it has fixed positions where it sticks better I feel yeah, like it's not, it's not some, it's not a mic where you can adjust very um, precisely where you want it to be. It's just kind of like, yeah, uh, 
I'll open it and it should be about there. Which is fine, I guess. Um, that works fine. You don't really need super precise mic positioning, right? I mean, it's just yelling at your friends most of the time. It's big, I guess. It is pretty big. But it's comfortable, surprisingly. So the one that I tried before was a cabled version, but it had the same kind of build and shape. Hey, I think I kind of look a bit like Mercy now. Except that my hair is the wrong color. Maybe? <laughs> and the headband is actually very comfortable. Um, most of the headsets that I've tried have a headband that kind of yanks at your hair a bit at the top and makes it uncomfortable for long-term use. But this one is a very thick and soft cushion. And it's very flexible. Um, yeah, it's really, really soft. I'm not sure how hot or cool this will be when using it for long gaming sessions. Uh, I will find out, and you will find out with me. Especially when I play PUBG, because it's impossible to play PUBG without a headset. You really need to hear all the sounds, and I think that's where the 7.1 will help. Oh, so I turned it around, right? And I discovered another uh, feature here. So it's like, um, it looks like a dial kind of thing. It doesn't rotate, it just moves a little bit um, in each direction. And I, I guess this is the charging cable. Uh, it's a micro USB, right? Micro, yeah. I think this is micro USB, not mini USB. I always get two of them mixed up. So anyway, let's see what else is in the package, right? So this was nestling in the ear cup. I think it's the Bluetooth receiver, which I'm going to have to plug into my computer. I'm going to leave the setup for another time, yeah. This is just supposed to be an unboxing and um, first impressions. So what else is in this box? Cardboard. Okay. Ah! Okay, so they've managed to squeeze um, a handbook in here as well. And a safety leaflet. A warranty guide and some cables so I'm gonna open I am presuming this is the charging cable which is mini USB but since I've always been an Android user I have tons of these cables everywhere hey here's the cable It's got the nice um, design here on the USB head and it looks pretty long. So I'm not sure if this can be used wired and wireless. So that means if I need to charge it, I could plug it into um, another charging USB, you know, a normal USB charging port like in the wall or something and then still keep the receiver plugged in because I'm not sure about you but I'm using a laptop and I'm oops sorry and I am not sure if I'm gonna have enough USB ports to both charge and um, receive so I'm gonna find that out as well I mean as it is I'm already having some problems with USB ports I have to use um, a USB dock extender kind of thing because my mic is a USB mic, my keyboard is a USB keyboard, my mouse is a USB mouse, and I still have um, the webcam. Hi, webcam. Yeah. Which is, of course, USB, right? So yes, this has been the Void uh, Wireless. I really love the shiny ear cups. Look at that. Look at how clear and beautiful it looks in the ear cups. I mean, it's like I'll never ever really see it because it's going to be on my head, but it just looks really nice. See? 
Mm. Beautiful. Okay, so headset aside, now we're on to the main course, right? Or is it dessert? It's actually the last item which I've gotten um, from Corsair for the peripheral range. And it is the keyboard. So I know everyone loves keyboards, right? I mean, I myself have tried like up teen keyboards in my life and it really took me quite a long time before I figured out what I really liked in my keyboard. And after all these years of playing with keyboards, I have decided that I do not like super noisy keys. So not too fond of blue keys and that I really like red switches on my keyboard. So this is what I picked. This is the K70 Lux RGB mechanical keyboard. So as usual, I'm going to read from the back first, okay? It has cherry red mechanical switches, um, multiple gaming devices, full spectrum color, one amazing show. So I think this is about uh, the lighting and stuff. Spectral syncing, shift colors with the rhythm of your play. Mm. So maybe I should have an equipment, equipment camera stream as well. So you can see the equipment change color as well as, you know, my face. Triple rainbow. Three devices, three rainbows shifting in perfect sync. Ah. So I think this is one thing that's quite cool about Corsair products, that you can have your devices sync with each other so that the color scheme follows on or the rhythm follows on. And uh, they have Ride the Wave and Reactive Ripple. So these are just, um, you know, lighting, lighting um, differences, like different modes of lighting. USB pass-through and BIOS mode plus polling rate selector. Wow, you can select your polling rate. It's amazing. Fully programmable, assign macros to any key. So I don't really use macros. Um, even when I play World of Warcraft, I don't use macros, which is, I guess, why I'm such a lousy player at Warcraft, uh, World of Warcraft. But yeah, I, I tend to like um, direct control. But for people who do use macros, I don't know what, what games use macros. Mostly MMOs, right? MMO players. So that, that might be useful for you guys. You press one button and it activates a whole sequence of um, commands for you. Sturdy, rigid, brushed aluminium platform. Okay, this looks nice. The, the aluminium really looks quite premium and it's heavy. It's a heavy keyboard. So heavy keyboards are good in that when you put them on your table um, and you press on it, it won't just move around. Like you want it to stay where it is. Especially if you know you're one of those CSGO players where you put it at an angle and, and then you know you're like you're like typing like that. So the, like you push on this side, you don't want it to like rotate back to its normal position. You want it like how it is. Okay, wait. Do CSGO players play like this or like this? But either way, you don't want it to move too much. Detachable soft touch wrist rest. Okay. Interested to try the wrist rest. I generally don't really play with wrist rest. But this one looks like it might be comfortable because um, the headset foam felt really comfortable. So I have high hopes for this one. And the space bar looks like it's textured. So they also have different lighting modes for uh, the genre of game you're playing. Like FPS mode, the WASD is um, lit up in a different color. And for mobile, you have QWERDF, that's a different color. Mm, so the mobile lighting is not going to be useful for me because when I play Dota, I use legacy keys. Mm. Yeah, I know, I'm probably one of like the really few people who still use legacy keys, but I just kind of just men. Uh, uh, oh, it's heavy, it's big. And um, this keyboard is um, a full-size keyboard, so it's not the 10 keyless. And I like full-size keyboards because I like uh, the extra buttons at the side to bind, bind commands to. Dynamic multicolor backlighting, Q-Link synchronized cross-device lighting, cherry red German engineering, excellent key feel and fast precision actuation, ultra durable detachable soft wrist rest. Okay, let me see the front. 
So you guys can take a look at the back. Well, I look at the front. Cherry MX Red. So I'm not sure if you noticed the Cherry MX Red sticker here. Yeah. Yep. It's my favorite um, cherry key. Brown being my second. I cannot deal with black because um, it takes too much energy to press black. And like when I was playing Dota, my APM or my total actions per game was like about 4,000 throughout the entire game, of course. And that includes keyboard and mouse. But I'm, I'm guessing there's a lot of mouse, uh, a lot of keyboard actions. So using black keys is just too tiring when you're pressing so much. Um, I mean, I could see how it's more useful for, say, FPS players because you want a bit more control, especially when you're strafing and uh, moving. Black keys might be more useful for you there, but I've just grown really used to using as little energy as possible to press switches down. I started out gaming on a laptop, so I mean, I started out serious gaming on a laptop. I've been gaming on desktops for a long time, but serious gaming on a laptop. So I'm always very used to the quick actuation and the, you know, not using too much energy on it. And of course, me mechanical keys are very durable, which is very good when you're using so many actions per game. It kind of like, you know, helps you use up the lifespan earlier. Because I think mechanical switches have a lifespan of X number of presses. So, yep. Every time you press it, you are lowering its lifespan by one press. It's really quite a thick, a thick um, box. So. I'm not going to face it this way, I'm not going to drop it. But I think this keyboard is so solid that even if I dropped it, it probably, you know, wouldn't break. It might dent my floor. <laughs> so, first looks. Ta-da! I mean, no one wants to look at it in a box, right? So I'm just going to take it out quickly. Okay. So let's start with the things that are not the keyboard because I like to keep you guys in suspense. We have a keycap remover here and we have some additional keycaps. So the keycaps that they have added are WASD and these are textured. And we have, what's this? O-W-E-R-F-B. Oh wait, is this O? Oh, it's Q, sorry, it's not O. So it's Q, I was like, why would they give O as an extra keycap? But this looks like O, see? Looks like O, right? And this looks like O too. This um this one. <laughs> so anyway. It's Q W E R D F. So it's for both the um MOBA and FPS players. And it's textured. See, you can hear it when I run my fingernail over it. RIP headphone users. So put this aside. I'm just gonna play with the normal, <coughs> excuse me, keycaps first, and um, see how those feel. So of course you have the instruction booklets, warranty guides, and yeah, information in general, and the wrist rest. This new equipment smell so nice. So the wrist rest promises to be soft and comfortable. And actually it's not soft at all. I was expecting something spongy, but it's um hard rubber on a plastic base. So uh, uh, a bit iffy about using it. I'm trying to see how it feels on my palm. It feels like... It feels a bit like the side of my mouse. Um, except that the textures are depressed and not raised. 
So the mouth triangles here on the side, they are raised. And these are like holes which are poked into the wrist rest. So the wrist rest also has three feet here. One, two, three. To, I guess, help with the, the traction and um, keep it stable when you are gaming. Okay, so I know you guys have still been waiting for this, right? I'm still not going to the keyboard yet. Now we're going to talk about the cables. There are two USB cables. So I'm presuming that one is for um, powering a USB plug which is on the keyboard itself so you can you know, plug your mouse directly into your keyboard rather than going to the back of the computer or you know plug other USB devices into it and it's a braided cable braided cable is really thick this one's really thick so for comparison this is the mouse cable the harpoon cable look at the difference it's really really thick um, but at the same time it feels quite supple so I'm hoping that it wouldn't kink so much um, I accept braided cables on keyboards so just now I was talking about how I didn't like braided cables on my mouse because it tends to to um, kink up and you know kind of spoil really easily with the way I use it but for keyboards you don't really move the keyboard around so much you kind of like just plug it in and then the cable stays there so braided cables to me are okay on keyboards okay I am gonna cut the cable free rather than thread it through and this keyboard really looks nice I'm gonna remove this plastic bit mm. can you hear that? can you hear the unpeeling sound? it's a very nice textured aluminium it's smooth and cool like cool to touch and at the back here we have what I think is the BIOS DPI switcher thing and as expected, that's the USB additional plug, which I'm guessing you can plug other devices into. So let me see. These are, I should think they're USB 3. Um, can you hear that? Can you hear that? And listen to those red keys. Just listen to them. It's like, not too loud, but it's, you know, loud enough to know, to let you know that, hey, I've been pressed. So anyway, let's continue with the bottom. There are four feet. Oh, it flips out to the side. So cute. See? Flips out to the side. Normally, they flip out like this way. Like something like this one, I guess. these flip out to the side which I guess helps with the traction of the keyboard again mm. so it sits pretty high I think the front feet are for when you attach the rest to it so this is how it's gonna look with the rest attached like that and um, Mm, I will try it with the rest on. I will also try it with the rest off. But I think with the rest off, I'm going to want to flip the bottom feet in so that only the back is raised. Like that. Yeah, because the angle just feels right. It sounds so good. So over on the top right hand side of the keyboard, we have some control buttons. I think this is volume because it's scrolly and this is mute probably and we have the lighting button and uh, lock I'm not sure what the lock is oh I think this is the windows key lock button see and this is the light so 
Here we have the media buttons, stop, rewind, play, pause, and fast forward. And the, the wording on the, on the keycaps is not standard wording. So it looks a bit different, which is why just now I had a problem looking at the, um, the extra keycaps that they gave, the textured ones, these. And if you take a look at the space bar, the one, the default one that they ship it with is textured. So it's a plastic keycap, and uh, the surface is textured in like a crisscross kind of um, pattern. I'm going to open the keycaps in the package to see what kind of material they are, because it looks like it's rubber capped. Okay, I'm not going to struggle with packaging. Scissors. I'm just going to take out the W. Hmm. Okay, it's not rubber. It's plastic. So I think it would have been really nice if it was rubberized. Um, but, of course, I will take whatever, you know, it, I get. <laughs> I'm not going to complain too much. I'm not actually sure if I will use this. Let me just pluck out this W. Okay, so the keycaps come out really easily. And um, I, after using keyboards, I've realized that I actually do like keyboards where the keycaps come out because that means you can clean it out a lot easier. I do have some mechanical keyboards where the keycap cannot be removed and it kind of distresses me when I drop something inside and I blow and like try to pick it out and it doesn't come out. So removable keycaps, always good. And you can also customize your keyboard by buying different keycaps. Okay. I will get to the chat after this, don't worry. Don't worry, I will not forget the people in my chat. It's just that I wanna, I really wanna talk about this. Um, with my flow, yeah, and okay, time to find USB ports. So yeah, have a look at my glitch pillow on my chair while I hunt for some USB ports to use. Sorry. So I've managed to plug it in. Can't wait to get my desktop fixed up because then I will have more USB ports than I need. So currently the colors are not that great because I think it's default colors. FPS style. The WASD are lit up as well as the the arrow buttons here. Everything else is red. Let me press this light button and see what happens. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay. I've got a lot of weird things set up on my table right now. I'm trying to find the best angle and space to show you everything. Okay. Light button, where are you? Oh, it's gone off. Oh, it's gone back on. Hmm. Okay, so I guess right now, those are the only two colors. Let me see if I can make it any other color right now. Is there any function button that I can press? Oh, so the light button doesn't just um, switch it on and off. It changes the intensity of the light as well. This is the dimmers and then it gets brighter in 3 degrees before it, it switches everything off. Yep. 
I think I'm gonna have to install all the software and everything um, and play test and if you follow my stream you will get real-time updates on how I'm dealing with the product so do stay tuned for those I'm probably gonna be playing PUBG later and um, before I sign off I'm gonna show you all the equipment again and then I'm gonna go through the chat so this is the mouse which is the harpoon this is the mouse pad which is dual sided one side is rough and the other side is smooth and then we have the headset which is the void wireless it's a 2.4 gigahertz wireless with beautiful ear cups and uh, microfiber padding on the inside. It makes me look like Mercy, so yeah. Okay, now we are officially.